welcome to another episode of Council Connections. This program is an opportunity for your elected officials to keep you up to date on the events, legislation, and initiatives that matter most. I'm Shar Friedberg, and today I'm pleased to welcome Ward 2 Council Member Kyla Clark. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. It's a pleasure being here. So why did you run for office in the first place? Well, simply put, we need more women in office. You know, women make up roughly half of the population, yet we're the most underrepresented in political um, offices. Wow. I know, it's shocking, right? You know, in addition to that, having more women in office ensures that we have diverse perspectives, and that's one thing I wanted to add to the City of Laurel Council. Nice, and is that the reason why you're wearing purple? Yes. You know, I wore purple for Women's History Month. We're celebrating all of the accomplishments of women in history, in political parties, in our community. Um, they tell me that the purple represents justice, dignity, and also being loyal to the cause. Nice. I really like that. So um, what are your goals for this term? That's a great question. You know, I've been thinking about this question for quite some time, especially while I was running for office. I wanted to have some goals for each term. Um, to start off, as we approach the summer months, I wanted to find a viable solution in our neighborhoods for the noise. We've had a lot of residents that have been very concerned about that, and I want to find a solution, especially for the summer. Um, in addition to that, I want to find some traffic calming techniques that could possibly possibly help slow down the cars and motorbikes throughout the neighborhoods. We've had a few emails and also at our town hall recently where they've spoken about that. Um, one last thing also to implement an approach to maintain clean streets. We want our neighborhoods to be clean. We want to be able to come together and to ensure that when you walk through, you don't see litter, you don't see trash. We don't expect it to be perfect, of course, but we care about our environment and we want to make sure that the city looks that way. I really like that. That sounds awesome. So what's your favorite part of Laurel? Wow. I, I don't know. It's hard to choose one. Laurel, I love Laurel. I've been here for nine years. Wow. It has been quite a treat being in Laurel. I used to live in Silver Spring when I worked on Capitol Hill. Mm. And for me, Laurel is a convenient location between Washington, D.C. and also Baltimore. It makes it perfect. We're maybe 12 minutes away from BWI for anyone who loves to travel. Um, in addition to that, we have a rich history. We have outdoor recreation um, areas. We also have diverse dining options, shopping and entertainment, employment opportunities, and cultural diversity. It's absolutely the perfect place to live, work, and to visit. If you don't mind me going back for a bit, you said you were on Capitol Hill. What did you do yes. at Capitol Hill? Well, wow. I was a writer on Capitol Hill for a U.S. senator wow. um, that represents New York, and I was her regional representative in New York State as well. That's incredible. I assume that she's still in the Senate? She is. She's still in the Senate, and she's still fighting for the cause. It's great, again, to see women that are in uh, political offices because we bring those diverse perspectives, and it was such a treat being able to watch a leader like her um, be in office. So thanks to Senator Gillibrand. All right, Senator Gillibrand, if you are watching this, thank you very much for inspiring this amazing councilwoman. So what do you do outside of Laurel? Well, so I'm a director of public relations wow. and communications. Um, another thing that I do is also volunteer in my community. Um, I love spending time with my family and going to Broadway shows. Um, back to my position, I recently was on Capitol Hill mm -hmm. um, helping to uh, bring more attention to bleeding disorders. As you may know, March is Bleeding Disorders Month, and um, we want to make sure that we help those in the community um, be able to afford co-pays. Uh, health insurance can be quite costly for anyone, but especially for those that are in the ble bleeding disorders community. So I was on Capitol Hill for a couple of days leading up to uh, the State of the Union and just talking to our congressional members within Maryland, helping, to, helping them to understand how important this act is. That's really nice. I really like that you do that. Um, 
What's one skill that you really wish you could learn? You might not believe this, but for me, I really want to learn how to can. Really? Yes, it is a passion of mine. One of the council members is really good at that. Uh, council President James Cole. I'm trying to get him to teach me how, but he's so busy. So if anyone knows how to can, please contact me at kclark at laurel.md.us and let me know when your next class is. I will be there. <laughs> All right. You heard it here first. Um, who is your role model as a child? I figure your role model is the senator that you worked with. That's one of your role models now, but as a child? I would say growing up, for me, my role model were my community members. The people that you see every day, that you interact with, that you see your parents waving to in the morning. Um, my parents made sure that I was surrounded by people who were ethical, who were grounded, who taught you things that you needed to know as you, as you grow up. Um, in addition to that, I let people laugh, but I was well-rounded. Um, I started off in a, pre a Jewish preschool. Wow. I then went to a Catholic high school and graduated from there. Um, I attended a black Methodist church um, and then went to, went to an HBCU in Atlanta, Georgia and graduated from a Jesuit college. So. Wow. <laughs> So you have knowledge of a lot of different religions and you think that serves you well in office? I think it does because it helps you to not judge so much, to be open to other people, to understanding different nuances that make you so diverse and to welcome them. Um, I've learned that there are wonderful people everywhere. And I think my parents opening me to those types of communities helped me to see past color, to see past religion, and to just see people for who they are. That's really nice. I feel like that's something we all need to learn. And final question, what's your favorite emoji? <laughs> that's a funny question. I love that you asked that. I would say for me, seems a little bit weird, but the heart one is mine. I absolutely adore this emoji because it reminds me of love, hope, and unity. And so it also reminds me of Laurel and how much we love to come together, not just at events, but for our, our town halls, our council meetings, and even the staff here, you know, I love being able to see that emoji and it reminds me of how welcoming and how loving our community is. That's really nice, I love that. Um, before we wrap up, how can people contact you so that way they can say what they feel about the city of Laurel? Absolutely. We can, you can contact me at email address kclark at laurel.md.us. And I don't mind giving out my mobile number that you can contact me on via text or telephone, 443-972-0046. I love to hear from community members. It helps keep us up to date. And I love connecting with you. All right, Council Member Kyla Clark. She is War 2's Council Member. Thank you for coming again. Thank you. And thank you for tuning in to this episode of Council Connections. I'm Shar Friedberg, and I'll see you next time.